Let's celebrate 100 years of the Walt Disney Company. One major Disney accomplishment will be highlighted for each year the past 100 years. In this first episode, 1973 to 2022, there will be only one entry for each year. So some very important Disney milestones did not make it on the list. So if you don't see your favorite, let me know down in the comments section below. Okay, let's go way back 50 years to 1973. In 1973, 73, the full-length animated feature Robin Hood debuted in theaters. It was the first animated feature to be released that Walt Disney himself was not involved in after his passing in 1966. In 1974, Disneyland's Carousel Theater, formerly used for Carousel of Progress, debuted America Sings, a rotating animatronic retrospect of American music in anticipation of America's bicentennial celebration in 1976. With the rotating Carousel Theater, America Sings was the highest capacity attraction in the park, so there was rarely a wait. In 1975, Space Mountain was launched at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom, helping set into orbit the space craze of the 1970s. In 1976, America on Parade performed at Disneyland and Walt Disney World to celebrate the nation's bicentennial. In 1977, three Winnie the Pooh animated featurettes were sewn together into a feature-length anthology film, The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I still feel like a seven-year-old when I hear, and the rain, rain, rain came down, down, down. In 1978, something got into the Matterhorn. An abominable snowman took up residence in the Matterhorn to roar at bobsledders for the very first time. In 1979, Disney debuted its first PG-rated film, The Black Hole. Apparently, the film's budget was a black hole too, because it was Disney's most expensive film up to that point, costing $20 million, a shocking amount for 1979. Since two years earlier, the original Star Wars film was made with a budget of only $11 million. Following its success at Disneyland in 1980, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad opened at Walt Disney World as the wildest ride in the wilderness. In 1981, Disney released its first full-length animated feature for home video, Dumbo. In 1982, Walt Disney World opened its second theme park, Epcot Center, featuring World Showcase and Future World. Epcot used to be considered an acronym, meaning Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, but we all know it really stands for Every Person Comes Out Tired. In 1983, the Oriental Land Company opened Tokyo Disneyland, the only Disney theme park resort that is not owned by Disney, which is awesome because it reminds us of what Disney is capable of. Not sure what I'm talking about? Ride Winnie the Pooh in California and then ride it in Tokyo. You will wish the Oriental Land Company owned more Disney theme parks. In 1984, live action feature film Splash debuted under Touchstone Pictures, which was created to enable Disney to produce films for more mature audiences. In 1985, Disney debuted their first Saturday morning cartoons, Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears and the Wuzzles. In 1986, The Living Seas opened in Epcot Center. Try to imagine, just for a moment a future world attraction that doesn't promote any Disney intellectual property at all. Oh my god, in 1987, the first Disney store totally opened in the Glendale Galleria, like in Southern California. In 1988, inspired by Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego, Walt Disney World opened the Grand Floridian Beach Resort. For 1989, I'm gonna break my own rule. I just have to. Disney MGM Studios theme park opened its gates in Walt Disney World. Here's me at the opening. Also in 1989, full-length animated feature Little Mermaid debuted, starting a renaissance in Disney animation. In 1990, the Disney Afternoon Television syndication block debuted, giving kids after school a chance to get a daily dose of Disney. In 1991, Disney Vacation Club was founded. En 1992, Disneyland Paris, connu à l'époque sous le nom de Ro Disneyland, a ouvert ses portes près de Paris. I was there for its soft opening, and I have to say, Disneyland Paris is Disneyland done right. It's
In 1993, Mickey Mouse got his own land, a Disneyland called Mickey's Toontown. In 1994, Disney Theatrical Productions opened its first Broadway show based on a Disney feature film, Beauty and the Beast. In 1995, Walt Disney Pictures released the first completely computer animated feature film, Toy Story. The first feature length film of Pixar Animation Studios. In 1996, Disney acquired ABC, the very same network that aired Walt Disney's Disneyland in 1954 on television, the show that introduced the concept of Disneyland to the world. In 1997, full length animated feature Hercules debuted. In 1998, Animal Kingdom opened as Walt Disney World's fourth theme park. In 1999, Walt Disney's vision of new segments replacing older ones in Fantasia finally came true with the anthology musical animated feature Fantasia 2000. Guests still saw The Sorcerer's Apprentice from the original, but all of their segments were brand new. In 2000, full-length animated feature The Emperor's New Groove debuted. In 2001, both Disney California Adventure and Tokyo Disney Sea opened their gates. In 2002, Walt Disney Studios Park opened in France, directly across from Disneyland Paris. In 2003, Finding Nemo debuted, making us all wonder whether we could learn to speak whale. In 2004, Disney acquired the Jim Henson Company, giving them the rights to the Muppets. In 2005, Hong Kong Disneyland opened its gates. In 2006, Roller Coaster Expedition Everest opened at Animal Kingdom in Walt Disney World. In 2007, full-length animated feature Ratatouille debuted, making us all wonder when we're served delicious food in a restaurant whether there's a rat in the kitchen. In 2008, full-length animated feature WALL-E debuted. In 2009, Disney acquired Marvel, leaving Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios inadvertently promoting now Disney-owned Marvel characters. In 2010, Nighttime Spectacular World of Color debuted in Disney California Adventure, proving that water shows had come a long way since Dancing Waters at the Disneyland Hotel. In 2011, the ship Disney Dream set sail, navigating Disney into the cruise ship industry. In 2012, Disney acquired Lucasfilm, enabling Star Wars to return to the big screen with brand new feature films. In 2013, Frozen became the highest grossing animated film to date. There may be Disney animated features more deserving of this distinction, but I should let it go. In 2014, Roller Coaster Seven Dwarfs Mine Train opened in the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. In 2015, feature-length animated film Inside Out debuted. In 2016, Shanghai Disneyland opened its gates. In 2017, feature-length animated film Coco debuted, celebrating the Mexican tradition of Day of the Dead. In 2018, Toy Story Land opened as a new land in Disney's Hollywood Studios to infinity and beyond. In 2019, Disney acquired 21st Century Fox. So I suppose Dr. Frankenfurter of the Rocky Horror Picture Show is now a Disney princess? In 2020, attraction Rise of the Resistance opened in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. In 2021, themed land Avengers Campus opened at Disney California Adventure. And finally, in 2022, two-night interactive adventure Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser launched its maiden voyage into outer space. The experience is out of this world, but then again, so is the price. So many magical Disney memories. Here's to 100 more years of Disney magic. What year was your favorite Disney year? What did I miss? Tell me in the comments section below. I'm Andy the Palm Springs Linguist. If you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button down below. If you're already a subscriber, thank you. Please leave a comment down below, like and share the video, and you can choose from any of these great videos to see next. See you in the next one.